If you're on Windows 10 and you have a system based on Realtek technology, you're probably looking for this, the Realtek Sound Manager. And unless you have the recurrent drivers installed, you're not going to find it. If you go down here to the bottom, and you click here, you'll need to see this speaker icon. But if you don't have it, we're going to show you how to get it. Now, if you go to the Microsoft Catalog site and search for Realtek, you'll get a result like this. Now, for your information, if you go to the description of this video, I have the download links for both the 32-bit and the 64-bit version of these drivers. So you can use the links here, or the download will start immediately as soon as you click on it. Now, I install all my downloads to one spot. Now, here I've created one. I have a master's downloads. I've created a real tech directory, and here's the download that I did for the 64-bit drivers. Now, what I do for that is I'm going to, I can say extract, but it doesn't do anything because it's a cab file. Uh, if it's a zip file, you can say extract all. The cab files, you need something else. Uh, so all I do is do an open uh, in Windows or double click on it, and it immediately opens the cab, extracts it automatically. Now you can just do a control A to select them all, and then do a control C to copy. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to go back up to the Realtek directory. Now, there's the directory I created, Win10 Realtek Audio 64. But here as the demo, I'm creating the one called Demo Folder. Okay. And create that. And I go into it. And I do the Control V or Paste to paste them. And it puts all those things that were extracted and you copied into memory. And it's writing them out. So I'm going to cancel this one and get rid of this uh, demo folder here. Okay. But. Here's the folder with all the drivers already stored there. So there's not an installer that's inside this directory. Instead, we're going to use a device manager to point to this directory so it'll do the install for us. Now there's a few ways to get the device manager. One I like the most is I have right click on PC and click on manage. You see here's the device manager. You go down here, you'll see sound, video, and game controllers. Now you'll know if you have a Realtek if it says Realtek High Definition Audio. If you right click on it and you say Update Driver, uh, there's a couple of different ways you can go here, but you're going to say Browse My Computer for Driver Software. Now here it's already pointing because I've already done this. First of all, take that off and include subfolders. Okay, you're going to browse. And you're going to scroll down until you get to that folder. There's the Realtek folder under Master Downloads for me, but there's the folder I want to use. I'm going to click on OK. So I'm now I'm pointing to the right directions to find the latest updated drivers. Now here it's searching for to see if it finds any drivers there. Now here it said it's already done because I already did. I already installed it. But yours is going to start the installation and it'll soon complete. One note here, I'm pretty sure it tells me that I had a reboot, so you're going to have to probably reboot uh, after this installation is finished. Now, when the installation did that, it added an entry to the control panel. So we're going to go down here and type in control panel, go up here, and go to the control panel. And then under hardware and sound here, click, you'll see you should see the Realtek HD audio manager there. So we're going to click on that. And guess what pops up? Your audio manager. Now, after you reboot, you go down here. You won't see this icon here because it's not been configured to show yet. You can't just right click and go there. What you have to do is go to the control panel again and get into here. Now there's two distinct types of settings. One's for the application itself and then one's for your devices like your speakers and your microphone. We're going to go down here to the connector settings and we're going to take a look here. It says here if it's jack detection, click there. But normally you're going to leave this on HD audio front panel. Here about to pop up when some of the device has been uh, uh, put in, plugged in, it'll automatically uh, detect it. So you have to just play with these and plug in some stuff in the front, like headphones or whatever you might pr uh, plug in on the front. So when you configure, once you configure those settings, okay, you have to click on the OK uh, button here. Do that. You have uh, now you have to go up to the gear icon, and there's some more things here. There's uh, the advanced settings. You mute the rear output device. The one in the front headphone is plugged in. You know, different kind of things. When you hover over these, by the way, they should give you an explanation of what they do. Okay? 
and the same thing for recording devices down here. You go down here and you make your selection. Leave it at default for the most part and uh, do that. So once you're done with all those, you click on OK here. But believe it or not, you're not done. You have to click on the eye icon. And here's where you turn on the display icon down here that it shows up in the corner. Uh, down here at the uh, lower right hand corner of Windows. So if we go down here, we uh, turn this off, for example, and I'll click on OK. You'll see it's not there. So when we're there, when you when you have it, it won't be clicked. So click on it, click on OK, and then from then on, you'll be able to call it up from your taskbar and your icons down at the bottom. So now we're going to get to the meat of it, what you really did it for. Uh, when you first come up, it could be in stereo, it could be in 5.1, but here's where you select uh, which one is. You, you can switch between whatever your, your setup is. And here's a set 5.1 setup that I have. Uh, I have a center speaker. I have uh, a subwoofer. I turn it on. That one gets highlighted. As you can see, you turn it turn gets off. Uh, let me turn it back on. Okay, then if uh, you have rear pair, you know, those front and left. Now, surround sound really means that you have large back speakers, which I don't. I just have a small ones, so um, they're unchecked. Uh, swap center or subwoofer output. Not really. Now, speaker fill means, that, like it says here, that multi-channel uh, sound will come out, of, or two-channel sound will come out of all your speakers and not just uh, two in the front. So that's your basic uh, speaker setup. We'll go to sound effects, and these are different kinds of things, uh, like... Uh, auditorium it changes the sound like it echoes for an auditorium there's some presets here okay you can restore defaults here okay we can uh, arena or auditorium or stone room or whatever the hell it is you can select some of those and you can play play some songs to test that for the most part I leave them off okay and just let the song play for itself but to do that I use the equalizer okay and the equalizer uh, instead of using these, I'm going to put that back to none, to use the equalizer, they have uh, presets by the way, uh, you can go here, you can say oh, I want soft or jazz or rock or whatever, uh, you can do that. A couple other presets are here, and they'll try and make it sound like you're in a club, okay, or it's a rock equalizer. You can click here and you'll see the equalizer settings and you can adjust them yourself. If you like a different kind of rock sound or something. When you do that, it uh, enables the save uh, button over here. So you click on that. Now it already has one called My Set because I put it in there. Okay, but well you type in the name you want, say yes, and you'll see you now in your drop down, you have one called My Set. Now, you can have three or four. You can have My Jazz Set or My Pop Set. For the most part, I just leave it at none for right now and uh, determine it at the time I'm going to play a particular album. Now there's other settings here. A karaoke, I'm not even going into it. It's basically supposed to cancel the voice out of the song so you can sing along, I guess. Uh, I haven't tried it. The volume down here, the volume bar, if you notice here, if I move it down here, it actually coincides with the volume control you have here. So to change your volume, you can still use it down on Windows without having to open this up. Uh, but they're, they're linked together. It's the same volume control. Room correction. This is your placement of your speaker. You notice here I said my, these speakers are five feet away from me. Okay, my front ones. They're probably only like two right next to my monitor. But you set this up for the room so that it increases and decreases loudness based on the distance of the speakers away from you. So if you're in a 5.1 game, you want, and it knows what it is, you can do that, either in feet or meters. And you can set up your room so that it actually adjusts those sounds for the distance away and you have to enable it down here as well. So play around with these until you have the distance and the sound and you change the dBs as well until your room set up the way you want it to. Test it with your favorite games to make sure that the sounds are coming out of the front and the rear that you want so that you have that three-dimensional sound in games. Uh, quote default format, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. I'll leave it at uh, whatever quality it's set at. Uh, normally it's a studio quality. Uh, and your know, frequencies, I, if you're an audiophile, you'll know better than I do about this. Now moving on, this is your speaker configuration. Uh, you see up here there's a little menu that I don't have anything plugged into digital uh, output or 
So none of those apply. But you can use this menu up here to switch over to like for your microphone, which is the major other thing that I use because I'm doing these texts, these uh, videos with voice. And you notice I have noise suppression turned on. And there's other settings here like acoustic echo. It says that if it doesn't it stops the sound from bouncing off your walls, it allows for that. Uh, if you have things with drapes, you don't have much echo, then turn it off. Uh, play with that again to see if you like uh, that cancellation. Conference mode means basically how sensitive your microphone is. It'll either pick up close by or everybody in the room. So if you only want your voice, then two. If you want the room, eight, because everybody's voice will be heard. Now, the recording volume, I usually leave it, it's at 100 right now, but I usually leave it around, uh, that's the mute button, but I use it at 20 dB and the playback by the volume of about 8. I don't use playback volume because I'm not playing back through the microphone jack, but the recording volume gives me a clear uh, no, uh, voice recording. Now the acoustic, I turn off the conference room, I use noise suppression because I'm doing videos with my voice. So that's the microphone and here's the speakers again. You just want to go in, oh by the way, these panels down here, they actually are lit up. Only the ones that are plugged into are being used by the system to detect that and it lights up just those two. For example, you see those four there are not lit up, but here it's the speaker and you can switch functions here by just clicking on the jack. Okay, and uh, I have nothing in the line in, for example. Okay, um, let's see. Rear speakers are all through the one, so that's not same with the front speakers because I have a box that does that, that actually separates them. And the mic in I do because I'm talking in a microphone. So you can use those to click on them and now I'm in the microphone effects or I can use that top menu. So there you have it. Most importantly, here's how, the, how to get the driver and install them so you can even get to this and be able to adjust it so you can enjoy dynamic music on both your applications and your games.